And welcome back to the Morning Drill. Joining us this morning, we have Pat Gladys, Joan Koken from Armstrong. Good morning, guys. Good to see you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to be seen. Boy, uh, uh, <laughs> there's just there's a lot to talk about. Uh, we were uh, talking with the Crawford County Commissioner Francis Wiederspan Jr. Uh, yesterday. Uh, about uh, the fair and what's going on there. And, of course, one of the things that's been uh, a big topic over the last couple of years is the free Wi-Fi up there and the hotspots that uh, people can enjoy while they're at the fair. Uh, let's talk about that since uh, the fair season is just a couple of weeks away. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff, uh, both for us and certainly for the, the folks uh, directly involved with uh, the operation, uh, are underway. The fair office is already open up there. And, oh, wow. Uh, we uh, we are the uh, the internet power for that. Uh, I was thinking the other day. I, I I guess maybe I reflect a little more uh, this time of year, or maybe this time of life. I'm not sure which, but I, I, I almost feel like I'm becoming part of the institution. So I, I'm not sure that's a good thing or bad. But, uh, well, yeah. well, this has been what year number? Oh my! Uh, I mean, we we began probably eight to ten years ago providing pieces of internet for uh, the stars for the backbone oh, uh, wow. you know the office uh, it, it became a requirement for the talent in their contracts that they had to have whatever green M&Ms and internet service right uh, so uh, that was how it kind of uh, started and then it's evolved into uh, as the opportunity uh, and the interest uh, also evolved into the Wi-Fi project uh, and that started small and it's uh, gotten to where we uh, we cover a significant portion of that, whatever I think it's a 67 acre fairgrounds wow. with uh, with Wi-Fi. Now. So was that a fun challenge, or was it? A- I, it, it was for 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 me and my team. Uh, it really is because we we a lot of times we're on maybe even the bleeding edge of technology, not just the cutting edge. So we get to push the envelope and we uh, get uh, things and maybe try to use them and abuse them and get them to the edge of the envelope. Uh, it's a big Wi-Fi area. Uh, everybody knows that Wi-Fi has, you know, puts and takes, uh, you know, with it. And to try and get that uh, just up and running and uh, meshed so it was kind of a smoother experience where you're not dropping between cells and that kind of thing uh, presented some challenges and some learning opportunities for us. So. Is it amazing for you to look back at, at how much data is used during that week? Uh, yeah, we, we actually uh, started... Uh, probably three or four years ago uh, getting our network operations uh, just to run a log uh, just so we could watch the increase year over year uh, and it is a fairly incredible amount of, uh, of data that passes through just in a week uh, but again look at our society how connected it is uh, yeah. you can't you can't go anywhere and find somebody that's not on their phone uh, doing something but Joan for you uh, it's that had to have been a great opportunity to because you you interact with with the public so much to, to say, hey, listen, we've got, you know, Wi-Fi up there and it's free and available all week. So, you know, take pictures, share, enjoy. Yeah, we're going to do some things where people can come to our, or actually be anywhere and share their video and maybe do some live fun things on our website this year. So we will utilize a lot of different aspects of the Wi-Fi. I guess, um, again, kudos to Pat because every year when I'm at the booth, someone will come up and say, well, I was in the bunny barn or I was down in midst all these metal, you know, the campers. And, you know, we, every year we've progressed and we keep making it better. And I think even this year you might be doing it a little differently. Uh, we, we try to, tw- to tweak it and improve the experience. Now, you know, obviously, uh, uh, it is a massive challenge trying to make that solid everywhere. So, yeah, if, if your camper is out at the edge of the fence in the far corner, you know, you might have to move a little bit. But, you know, it, it's, it's a county fair in the country. Uh, there's lots of other things to, uh, to do. And you could, don't have to get too many steps to where you will be back connected again however you want to be. So. I wonder how many times uh, you'll hear, uh, hey, kids, uh, put Minecraft down and go Wash the wash the cow. Yeah. Probably not as many as you should. Actually. Yeah, yeah it, it, and you know there is that double-edged sword. You have everybody walking around with their uh, cell phones, and they're walking into each other instead of enjoying yeah. the fair. So you know you want to give or take there. It's there's a give or take. Sit down and have a, a hot sausage sandwich or a piece of pie, and then get your Wi-Fi out and uh, 
you know, or we're going to have to have an ex or a lane, not an express lane for people that are <laughs> on Wi-Fi the, lane, a <laughs> Wi-Fi <laughs> lane, and, and they can just bump into each other. Um, yeah. And that seems to be happening. Well, even in downtown, you'll see someone walking and uh, yeah. yeah. And you know, who would have envisioned it? The things like you know, like you folks do, you're streaming live from a county fair in rural Northwest Pennsylvania. Uh, Ten years ago, who'd have thunk it? You know? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's it's, uh, and we are. Uh, uh, I think we may have talked about this before, but when we first started uh, doing the the large area Wi-Fi, uh, we got contacted by some technology uh, trade magazines uh, for interviews because nobody was doing anything of that scale anywhere. Uh, so, you know, uh, we have kind of a history uh, in this area with uh, pioneering things in the, the communications, especially the, the, the telecommunications uh, arena. So that's kind of a cool thing for a uh, little Meadville, Titusville, Crawford County uh, kind of uh, area. John, uh, Armstrong is sort of like the, the perfect size company almost, because it seems like you guys are still unique enough that you can do kind of what you want or need to do. You can push technology, you can try things without worrying about failure or, or, or maybe maybe failing at certain things but taking that information and saying okay let's this is how we should do it right and do it better i i think that's very true and we may have touched upon that in the last time i talked yeah. to you is that because we are smaller uh, sometimes and and pat has alluded to this or talked about it many times we do have the ability to um try things i think you just said the bleeding edge or uh, we have a little bit more freedom that way and um you know his team he can talk about that and who he works with down in our corporate engineering um i think it does help to, uh, being a smaller independent family-owned company sure and, and i think the last part is even more key uh you know it's a, we're not a publicly held company so uh at some point there's a guy but the public does hold you up to well, that's high right. standards. We're held accountable, yeah. oh, we are. We're held accountable yes. but not, not to, not to, right. to uh, shareholders. Uh, there's a guy that can make a decision and commit uh, time, talent, and resources to that decision uh, and make it work. Uh, and uh, another thing I think that's a big advantage is that uh, you know our, our uh, ownership, our leadership, we live in the communities that we service. Uh, they're yes, not, uh, you know, on uh, Park Avenue in in, uh, in Manhattan, uh, going to the office every day. They're going to the office that's a couple miles from their home. So I think that's a big advantage. And uh, as a result, they do things that, uh, well, they're they're uh, they use the technology themselves, uh, but they're also it's their neighbors, their friends, and uh, and family that are also taking advantage that's of the things we do. That's a real standout quality for Armstrong. Something that's how many years old now? Uh, as old as the company is, I guess it's uh, 50 plus. I'm mm -hmm. not sure what the uh, what the extra digits are, but it goes back a long way for uh, cable TV technology, and you know even that uh, we have really kind of evolved. We don't call ourselves a, a cable company anymore. We're a broadband provider. You know, when you first uh, mentioned that, Pat, I think we were in the car go going to lunch or something, and you said, you know, we're not a lunch was probably involved. Yeah. Uh, yes, you said <laughs> we're not a we're not a cable company, and I, it was just. It was almost refreshing to hear a cable company say that where you know we're a technology company things are changing it, it wasn't like some mediums today that sort of you know uh, well technology this and we don't know how to work it so we're just gonna keep doing what we've been doing for 200 years you guys know that things are changing and are changing with the times and, and not only changing with them but you're looking ahead and figuring out how do we make it possible when this does happen in five, 10, 20 years. Exactly, and I think a lot of other um, companies have come on board and they'll say they have fiber optics. They have a lot of things that we already have and have <laughs> had for a long time, but they market it that cable is this totally different entity than what they're offering. And, and you know, I think Pat will speak more to that. Um, when you see these, the ads on TV and, and uh, what they have that, you know, I think, even the phone companies, they've got 5G. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean because it's 5G, it's better than 3G or whatever. I mean, it's a really confusing um, technology, but uh, we offer, you know, the fiber optics, uh, you know, broadband is where we're really at. It's not cable, and it's hard to lose that um, title of cable, I well, guess. Well, we're so far past the days. You mentioned 50-some-odd years. I mean, 50 years ago, uh, cable was around to get 
TV coverage to folks up in geographic areas where the, you know, the, the TV and, and the broadcast waves just weren't going. And now it's so much more than that. I mean, it's it, it every day. It's it's something new. It's a dynamic industry, and and people will say, I remember when I paid this much money, and I'll <laughs> say, well, that was thirteen channels and no, you know, no broadband, no internet, no TV everywhere. You know, we talked last time about how you can be in your phone. Now you will use data there, but if you're in a Wi-Fi area, um, you can watch a live sports program. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, our uh, technological evolution as a company uh, really swung on uh, something that we've already talked about is that uh, group of individuals, including our, our, uh, our engineering technical staff, uh, that, that took a flyer on this thing called the Internet 20-some years ago when it wasn't a, a solid lock uh, you know, kind of opportunity. Uh, again, they were a very early adopter of, uh, of cable broadband technology and uh, you know committed to that and and that really has kind of helped us uh, very fortuitously along the evolution as technology has has gone with that and even at that I mean we we uh, we've got some some really uh, uh, tuned in focused people that keep an eye on those kind of things uh, look how life is changing we watch TV differently than we did five years ago yeah and uh, you know that's continuing to change uh, and we're seeing, a, you know, really kind of a, an earthquake in, in that whole uh, industry of, of how, how people want their television delivered, how they want to use that product. Yeah, it's fascinating, not only the entertainment aspect of it, but information. Uh, you see people moving back to small communities because they're allowed to work from home, but they have to have the infrastructure in place to be able to do that. And that is in place, whether it's high speed internet or, and we're gonna talk about this now, fiber. I mean, everybody's talking about, you know, faster speeds and, you know, fiber this, fiber. They might not know what they're talking about, but you guys have said, we have this in place. It is in place. So let's talk a little bit about that. What is, what's the difference when they go on the site and they look and start reading about the different speeds that they can get, whether personally or for business, and then the fiber option? Um, so, you know, uh, we, I guess in some senses, we almost take it for granted. We, we, we started putting up fiber optic cables back in the 80s. Wow. Uh, and even though we talk about our cable modem services and products uh, that, that come the last mile or the last step into the house over uh, a coaxial network, uh, we've had a fiber backbone for our networks since that time going forward. Uh, one of the things that we're, we're finding now, especially with, with business needs, is... Uh, certain applications and certain uh, data traffic, uh, well, for an instance, so let's say uh, a medical center, they have requirements to protect my data and to make sure that it is uh, secure. So uh, things like a, a direct fiber optic connection for an entity like that becomes something that they become very interested in. And with the technologies that have, the way they've changed, uh, you know, the prices on that kind of uh, operation has come down where it's uh, affordable, day-to-day -day affordable. Uh, the example I always think of is, I, and again, I'm going to date myself, I remember when uh, a handheld calculator first came out. Texas Instruments had one that was a couple hundred bucks, uh, and 10 years later you could get one by turning in cereal box tops. <laughs> so as technology you know, becomes more commonplace uh, and more ubiquitous, the price comes down, and fiber optics is, is definitely in that uh, arena. Matter of fact, uh, once again, we are, we are a company that committed to the idea. Most of our uh, reconstruction that we do, uh, there is no coaxial hard line out on the poles anymore. We're bringing a fiber optic cable, a fiber optic network into the area, into the neighborhood, right to your house. And now we're even uh, beginning to do things where we're wiring, wiring fiber optics through your house, which with the right type of uh, uh, optical transceivers and so forth it makes it a, a virtually limited or unlimited bandwidth type situation that you can do anything with wow uh and you know uh i know that uh just from conversations that i'm on the periphery of uh internally they're looking at the the 10-year plan and the 20-year plan and trying to look into the crystal ball and see what the needs are going to be for consumers for business and position our architecture and infrastructure to, uh, to be able to address that. You're also talking uh, increased resolution on TVs, T 
TV shows. You're talking, and you're not just talking 4K anymore. There's 8K that's sitting out there. I mean, it's out there, but they're selling these things. So I can't imagine playing that game, looking into that crystal ball, saying, "Okay, well, what's what's after that? Sure. You know, what happens in within five years? Because what 4K and 8K have happened within just a couple years, really. Absolutely, and and you know, an interesting thing that happens. Uh, do you remember when we were talking about 3D? <laughs> for television. Yeah, that's right. So, so there's a technology that really failed off the launch pad. Uh, so again, right again. Yeah. So, so, but it looks like it looks like uh, you know, 4K is actually there's content of becoming available more and more. Uh, there's uh, hardware. Uh, you know, manufacturers have committed to the televisions. So it looks like that is actually going to go forward. So. You know, that guy with a crystal ball, he's not only got to see what's out there, but he's got to pick the right horse, too. Uh, so we, we have, uh, once again, uh, I think we take a measured approach to technology, but once we, uh, once we cross the Rubicon, if you will, we, we commit to it full force. And we actually, uh, without uh, having all the details in hand right now, I can tell you that there are some things coming on for uh, delivery of those products over our networks that are going to be expanding uh, in the very near future. Wow. So describe the type of business. You, you mentioned uh, m- the medical field, and you've got telemedicine today. You've got you know files and all sorts of things that get shared over networks. What kind of a business would benefit from having fiber? Uh, really, anyone that, that is, a, is a high bandwidth user. If they, if they t- transfer a lot of data, whether, I, you know, the, the medical example was for absolutely secure data they're between two medical facilities they have a direct connection where the ends show up in both buildings and they're not they don't come for, up for air between them hmm. they control that entirely uh, if you have a tool shop or a manufacturing plant and you're transferring you know design files uh, things like that uh, you know it really is based on your bandwidth needs we have lots of products uh, that that are uh, cable modem based that that do anything anybody wants to do but if you have a greater need or if you have uh, specific needs that I want to get from point A to point B from my one plant to my satellite plant and I want to control it, I want to be the, the, uh, the gatekeeper of what happens with that, we, have, we, can, we can satisfy that need also. So, uh, yeah, it's really it's limited only by uh, a business's need and uh, somewhat by their... Uh, their appetite it's you know a dedicated fiber link is a little more expensive product but it, you have to decide is the value in that for your business uh, and many times uh, many times folks are making that choice now and it's not like uh, somebody's gonna pick up the phone and you're gonna say uh, yeah uh, this this town doesn't have the infrastructure in place as you said you guys have been working since the 80s right. on on the solid infrastructure Right, and, and we are not, uh, you know, one of the things that, that happened in our, one of our last major rebuilds, and I'll try not to be too droning and boring, is, you know, we were still a kind of a video-based uh, operation at that point in time. So somewhere down in the business quarter, there's a break point where we didn't get fiber all the way down to the end of the road. Uh, but we have our own construction departments, and, and we, we go out and put up fiber all the time just to serve your business need if, if, if that's the agreement and the commitment we come to. Uh, we can get to you, and we can, you know, we can. Uh, we're not, we're not shy about building to uh, make the business work for both of us. Now, for uh, Joan, uh, I would imagine those businesses need to contact Armstrong, and then they'll be sent to the business department. Or yes, we have uh, our rep uh, Dante Tiani um, is with Armstrong Business Solutions. All of our information and breakdown of our corporation is on, on Armstrong One Wire, so you can go up and, and um, pull down the Armstrong Business Solutions, see all the different options, pricing, download speeds, upload speeds, everything I guess you really need is on our website. So they can go there, get the information, mm-hmm. and then Go ahead and make mm-hmm. the call and get something uh, mm-hmm. set up and scheduled. Yeah, and we have we have live chat now, uh, which is is real nice for the residential. I don't believe the business end, but and you can also order online, and that's becoming um, a pretty popular way to get some of our products. Fast too. I mean, if you want to upgrade a service, you can go into your account. There, there's so much you can do within the website and your account that makes it 
so much easier. Yeah, yeah. you might want to go from our, our Zoom to our Zoom 2 and try it. And a lot of times uh, when you go to the site, there may be an introductory offer to go to the next speed. And, and so um, I really recommend people go to Armstrong One Wire. There are also videos that will um, explain a lot of different things. It will explain TV everywhere, downloading apps. Um, so we've got a lot of information on there and really need to direct people onto that site more. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming in. I have a feeling we're going to see you at the fair. Quite a bit. So. Quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah. No, it's always great conversation. I'm not going to ask you because I know we ask you every year what your favorite part of the fair is. But so we'll save those questions for when we're at the fair. But sure if folks okay. do have questions about fiber, uh, any of the services that you guys provide, they can contact uh, the, the, the company by going to the website and getting that information and making the call. Sure. And we love to see people. Uh, up in uh, Home Show Building Number One yes, uh, at the you. fair, we uh, we I think we try to secure a same spot where we can be found. Uh, so uh, come see us up there, and we usually have uh, some uh, giveaways. Yeah, and some giveaways uh, and some. Uh, we'll be promoting Healing Heroes again all through the fair, and uh, just come see us. And I believe uh, Kevin Tomney said that uh, he's baking all sorts of cookies to to hand out at the fair. Well, first of all, you said Kevin talked, and he's baking cookies <laughs> into one sentence. So, uh, <laughs> Kevin will eat cookies. You may see see him down at uh, at uh, the uh, some of the thunder to, thunder in the city events, uh, maybe mm -hmm. particularly at the firehouse tap and grill. That's so. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, he's not hard to be found. He so. actually helped us implement that one the event we're do, we've been doing down there. So oh, that's great. Kudos to Kevin. Yeah, and thunder in the city this weekend. So get out and enjoy that. A lot going on. Thanks, guys, for stopping in. Thanks for okay, having us. Thanks. All right, the morning drill will continue right after this.